It's from the UK started wearing face masks in countries with a high mask wearing culture, such as Japan, Singapore, China. The death rate from this virus is significantly less than it is here in the UK. Um, face masks are proven to help stop the spread of this virus onto someone else. So why aren't we using them? It may still be a while before restrictions are eased in the UK. So wouldn't this be a good time to use it to uh, ask uh, local clothing manufacturers, and there's lots of them in Warsaw and Wolverhampton, to manufacture as many face masks as possible and post them out to households within the region. This would avoid a possible shortage issue further down the line. Should we be wearing face masks, Rachel? Th this is a very interesting question. Now, the, the WHO still says no, their advice is not to recommend that everybody, general members of the public, should wear face masks. And they have some very good reasons for concern. For instance, if you wear a mask, you are more likely to touch your face. And we know that the one of the main routes of transmission of this virus of infection is you, you, you've picked it up on your hands and then you touch either your nose, your eyes or your mouth. And so if you have something across your face that invites you to touch your face, then it potentially increases the risk of you infecting yourself. Um, there's another behavioural issue here, which is the perception that if you're wearing a mask, you are somehow more protected and so you may be more inclined to undertake riskier behaviours. You may not socially distance in the same way that you would otherwise. So there are some, I think, rightly some real concerns around face masks. The flip side of that is um, that there, there, there is no randomised controlled trial evidence for whether or not face masks are beneficial or not in the case of coronavirus uh, uh, COVID-19 specifically. We do have some evidence for other viruses, but not this virus. Nonetheless, lots of countries are, are enforcing it. So Japan, South Korea, Hong Absolutely. Kong. Then you've got the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Germany, France, Spain. They're all either saying Absolutely. people have to wear them or they're all yeah. encouraging it. And I, th and I think the reason for this is not necessarily what the public assume to be the case. So there's two reasons for wearing a mask. One is um, to decrease your risk of being infected. And the other, of course, is to decrease your risk of infecting other people if you, unbeknownst to, to, to yourself, have the virus. You may be asymptomatic and um, unknowingly spreading it to other people. So, so a cloth mask is pretty rubbish as a form of protection for you against other people coughing virus particles over you. It may help a little bit. It's not that effective. But in terms of you, if you're infected, protecting other people from you transmitting the virus to them, then actually there is evidence that a cloth mask reduces the amount of virus particles you are generating um, to one thirty-sixth of what you would otherwise one thirty-six. One thirty-six. So, so yeah. Lisa Nandy, I was just hearing what Rachel said, and I was also listening to Patrick Vallance, the government's chief scientific advisor on Monday, who said, as you have just said, Masks don't, don't necessarily protect the general public, but they do help in stopping you transmitting it to others, which struck me in a pandemic as a pretty good thing to aim for. What, what is the Labour view on, or does the Labour have a, does Labour have a view on masks? Well, no, I mean, I'm not a scientist and I would definitely be guided by people who are in terms of uh, the advice that is given. But this week we had the situation where the governor of New York came out and said that people will only be allowed out in public um, because uh, if they're wearing face masks. And I think that's caused a lot of concern for people in this country, who many of whom aren't on lockdown. I know we keep talking about lockdown, but actually a lot of my constituents are still going out to work every day. Some of them are transport workers, they work in food production, you know, as well as the, the care sectors that we've been talking about. But others are just simply going to work in car park companies or um, on construction sites. They're going to work in warehouses, packing boxes for the minimum wage. And the number of reports that I've had from employees in those industries about employers who are not following the government guidance they're not allowing their employees to work from home if they can they're not following following and enforcing social distance measures um, and they're not putting in place proper hand washing facilities they are really really worried by these reports about face masks because if face masks are needed then they obviously need them and i think there's a couple of things that the government could do very quickly the first is to provide a level of clarity about that 
especially for people who are going out and working on the front line. And the second thing that I think that they could do as well is to take seriously this issue that there are many, many people whose employers are currently putting them at risk. I think most businesses are trying to do the right thing. But I have been overwhelmed with reports from people across the Northwest who are dealing with this. And I know that many of our mayors and our council leaders have as well. And I would urge the government to actually take some action to protect people. I, I think Lisa makes a really good point about the way companies are treating their employees at this time because the test of leadership is not in the good times, it's in the bad times. And if a company puts people first, that's the most important thing, the safety and the welfare of their people first. And when it comes to masks, I realized when I went to Japan for the first time, when I saw people wearing masks, I was then explained that actually they want to stop you getting infected. Yeah. So that aspect of it, as because Rachel says... Because the whole says, debate has been about whether it's protecting ourselves. But yes. As I say, and, when I listened to Patrick yeah, Vallance said, and, well, it can stop the transmission, I thought, well, surely but, that's, that's worth having, And to that it? extent, I, I respect the government for the way it's been dealing with this. It's been working with the scientists, listening to the scientists. We all, as a country, are following the, the, what the scientists are advising us. Maybe they will come round to saying we need to use masks. I, 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 it might happen. Well, Derek Hunter has um, contacted us to say it's so difficult to buy any face masks in order to protect yourself. Many outlets online are charging over the odds for masks, and that's before you add in the, uh, the postage and packing. W what's happening with masks? We know the government is reviewing mm. the, 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 the guidelines. Is it partly because we just haven't got enough? Or is it that, that, that genuinely, or is it that the government just isn't decided on this? Well, I think Rachel's put the uh, point very clearly about the evidence on this. And I think that where you haven't got clear evidence that masks are going to make that key difference, then we shouldn't be prioritising So why are that. all these other countries doing it then? Well, I, I think... I think that, that's that, what seems puzzling, yeah, I think, I mean, to, to the people who are contacting us. Well, I think tonight. the World Health Organization advice is relevant. The advice of, of our medical officers and our scientific officers is clearly relevant. There are, of course, different types of masks. You know, a, a plain cloth mask is one thing. There are particular surgical masks that clearly are going to be of real help to people who are doing close work, close contact work in hospitals or other places. There's a clear case there for masks. But just for but the general think, public, that's what the question is. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I've listened very carefully. I take the point about the idea that, you know, you wear a mask to stop you transmitting any particles or any disease to other people. I think that we're looking very carefully at the evidence on this and constantly asking ourselves questions about you know, the strength or otherwise of it, and then taking action. But, but at the moment, I think it's right of us to prioritise those other types of PPE that are clearly needed and are make, going to make a difference well, well, in terms to the, of the transmission of this disease. Coming to the other part of Richard's question, and given how... Uh, I think it's fair to say the government was a bit caught out with PPE in terms of we haven't had enough, uh, certainly as, as much as, yeah. as people require. Richard is saying, wouldn't it be good to get ahead of this? Um, on face masks uh, and start asking local manufacturers to yeah. start making them. Wouldn't it be good to get in there early? Well, I think, I think the question of getting in there early, I think, I think already, uh, with regard to PP generally, we have ramped up the operation. Yeah, the face way masks in particular, that, we, that was the well, question. Look, I, I think we've got to follow the evidence. If, if the evidence changes and we are told that face masks are necessary, I'm confident that we can ramp it up. Uh, we do have the ability <laughs> to do that. Uh, we've shown in other areas of PP that we can do that. Let's follow that evidence and, and assess it uh, regularly. I mean, there's, there's, there's two important points here, I'd suggest. So one is whether or not the general public should be wearing simple, they can be cloth, face masks, in order to reduce transmission of this virus to other people. And um, the, the jury is out there, the WHO is still not advising that, but many national countries and New York, as you say, most definitely are. So it would be helpful to know when the government is going to give the public a definitive answer on that. I don't think the evidence is going to change quickly, so it would be helpful to know that sooner rather than later. But there's a second point about the PPE that we most definitely know is needed and is needed desperately on the front line, and that is the PPE that is protecting frontline staff, whether NHS or carers, from infection. And we know that there are huge problems with capacity there. Now, they're not unique to the UK. There are problems all over the world. But we've also got a country in lockdown right now. So we've got all these SMEs, these small and medium-sized businesses, so many people up and down the country who are not working currently. Where is the national government-led effort to 
boost production. We've got. Rich, I'll just interrupt. We've got about 20 seconds well, left. Well, you want to come the in? The British Karen. business is there to step up to the mark. Already, yes. Burberry and is happening. making. Yes. Uh, but we just heard Barber. They're exactly. making aprons. They're making gowns. And if 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 masks are going to be required, I'm sure British business exactly. will be ready okay. to make those masks. We are we are out of time. I'm afraid.